Good morning, our preteens. Pastor Dyson here, back with another Sunday lesson. I hope you guys are doing well this morning and that you slept well last night, that you had a good breakfast, or that you're gonna have a good brunch or lunch, whatever, wherever in the day you're watching this. Uh, and I hope you're ready to examine the Word of God together. Again, links to all of our playlists are down in the description, so make sure you go check those out, including the clip of the week. Uh, because you want to catch up on anything that you may have missed and as usual make sure you stay tuned until the end of this lesson for our announcements because you don't want to miss any important information so with our introduction out of the way let's get started headbands is a really popular game that has been remade into an app it's called heads up on the app store and in headbands you select a card from the pile of cards and you hold the card up to your forehead without looking at it now on the card is a name of either an object or a famous person, either real or fictional. And your job is to ask yes or no questions to the people you're playing with that can see what's on the card to try and figure out who is on your card, to try and figure out who you are, what name is on your card. And today, while we may not be playing headbands via YouTube, we are talking about who God is. And that leads us to our question of the day. If you're new here at Arc Preteens, every Sunday lesson, we ask a big we ask one question, we call it our question of the day, and we seek through this video to answer that one question by looking at what the Bible has to say about that question. And so our question of the day is which is it, one God or three? Because you might have heard some people talk about God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And those sound like three different people, don't they? So do we worship one God or do we worship three? Well, what, what do you think? Where you are, just take a moment. If you need to pause, you can. Take a moment. Do you think we worship one God or three? And I'll give you the answer. The answer is, well, we do worship one God. But why then do we describe God in these three different ways as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? How can one equal three? Well, if you've ever participated in a th three-legged race, you know how frustrating it sometimes can be to have to work with other people. It's easy to run the race by yourself, but when attached to another person or other people, it becomes a lot more difficult. And so our first question today that I want to address, we have a lot of questions in today's episode, is do you think it's difficult for God the Father, Jesus, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit to work together? Why or why not? So we serve one God, and we understand God is God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So do you think, in a manner similar to a three-legged race, that it's difficult for them to work together? Yes or no? And then why or why not? Take a moment, pause here, and think about that. So like I said, it's easy to run a race on your own. By yourself, it's easy. But having to drag around other people makes it a lot more difficult. And I'm happy to let you know that God works together, uh, the three, God with the three persons works together a lot more smoothly than us when we're in a three-legged race. So let's dive into the Bible. Let's actually take a look and see what the Bible has to say and show us about the Trinity. And now when I use that word, uh, Trinity is just a fancy word that describes how God is one but also three. And so when you think Trinity, think God. He's one but also three. And so the idea of the Trinity is a bit of a mystery. So let's see if we can figure out what the Trinity is all about. I have, I think, four, maybe five verses here. And I'm going to read through each of them. If at any moment you need to pause or rewind and reread a verse on your own, you can do that. Uh, and then I'll have some questions at the end of our verses. So our first verse comes from Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, which reads, After his baptism, as Jesus was coming out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Okay, so that's the account of Jesus' baptism. Uh, so that's one where we can see kind of the three persons of God all together. Uh, let's go now to John chapter 10, verse 30 where John writes that he recorded the words that Jesus said, this is Jesus speaking, the Father and I are one. And the rest of our verses will be written by John because this was a subject that John cared about uh, and that the Holy Spirit uh, inspired him to write down. And so we can read then in 1 John chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, and God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And then going back to the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 9 to 11, Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? 
The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. And our last passage, that was a bit of a long one. The last passage comes from, again, the Gospel of John. We're going to fast forward about six chapters to chapter 20, verse 21 to 22, where John writes, Again, he said, he being Jesus, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And so I have two, or one question, sorry. I have one question for you following these verses. After reading these verses, how would you answer our question? Is it one God or three? Take a moment, pause here, rewind if you need to read those four or five verses again. But after looking at those verses and seeing what the Bible has to say, what is the answer to our question? One God or three? I hate to break it to you, but the fact is that you and I will never 100% clearly understand the Trinity. And that's because God is all powerful. And in a lot of ways, he's just way beyond what we can actually physically, literally understand and comprehend. But we can do our best to know God and to understand him more, even when and if it's confusing. So let's look at some common examples that people use to try and help us to explain the Trinity. Now, not every example will be perfect, but we're going to look at a couple examples. Examples. Take a look at this braid. The braid obviously has three pieces, three different colors in it, yet we consider it one braid. We say, oh, that's a braid, and yet there's three different colors. And so two questions for you about the braid. How is a braid like the Trinity? And number two, what are some ways this example falls short of fully explaining the Trinity? So in what ways is the braid like a Trinity? And in what ways does the analogy uh, and the example kind of break down and not perfectly describe the Trinity? Take a moment, uh, pause here. If you're watching this video with someone, have a discussion with them. If you're watching on your own, you can write these things down or, or think about them. Just take a moment, pause here, and think for a second. A braid can help us think about the three persons of God being really just one God. But it's not a perfect example, as you guys explored in the question. So let's take a look at another example. Take, for instance, three different colors of paint on the left of your screen. Obviously, there's three different colors of paint there, not counting the background, just the paint cans, I should say. Uh, but let's say uh, you have three separate colors, I should say, not one, but then you mix them together and slowly but surely they start to become one color. Uh, if we're mixing them together, it gets kind of confusing. And so my question for you is how many colors of paint do you have when you mix paint together? Do you still have three colors? But it seems to be forming only one color. So how would you explain that? Pause here if you need to. How many colors of paint do you have now when you mix three colors together? I told you we have a lot of questions in this lesson, so I have two, I had another two questions following those two. How do these mixed paints remind you of the Trinity, and what about this example makes it not like our God being one, but also three? So in the similar way we thought about the braid, let's think about the paint now. In what ways does this analogy work, and this example make sense, and in what ways does it not quite make sense or not fully and accurately represent God? So take a moment, pause here, and think about these. Now with the braid, you could see the different colors even after they were braided together. But with the paints, they came together to make one new color and there's no way that you could ever split those colors apart again. And so neither of those is quite right because God, it's not like the Trinity, it's not like God is just like comes together as one and you can never separate him. Uh, but it's also not like a braid where you can easily undo it and separate it either. So those don't quite work. So let's try another example. So on the screen in front of you, you see a series of, how many words do I have here? 12. I have 12 words on the screen in front of you. And then what I want you to do, you don't need to pause here. Uh, if you want to pause, you can, uh, but you don't need to in my opinion. Uh, on the screen in front of you, I have 12 words. And I want you to pick the words that best describe who you are. Again, take a moment, pause if you need to, or just do it quickly. But of these 12 words, pick all the words that you think describe you. Now, if you're like me, you probably circled and chose more than one word, but those are all different people. Those are all different roles, right? Are you more than one person? Well, obviously not. Obviously, you're only one person. So how can it be that you circled more than one word? Two questions. How does thinking about your different roles remind you of the Trinity? And how is this example still not quite enough. I'll, I will address, I will talk about the words a little bit more, but I want you to think about these two questions first. So take a moment, pause here and think about these. The thing about the list of words is that you could be a son, brother, friend, musician, and neighbor, 
yet you're still only one person. And that's another way to think about God being one, but also three. But it's still not quite right. It's still not quite accurate because you can still only physically be in one place at one time. And you'll never be a son to your sister. It's impossible. You cannot be that role to your sister. And so you have only one role in her life. You're her brother if you have a sister. And if you have a brother, it's vice versa. But uh, you'll only ever have that one role in her life. And so God is the thing that differentiates God from us is that God is all powerful and he can relate to us in all three ways in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's look at one last diagram to see if we can finally get it. So take a moment, pause here, think about this diagram, read it, uh, you know, turn it over in your mind. Uh, but I would encourage you to take a moment and pause here. We will have, I think, there's three questions related to this diagram. Take a moment, pause here. Read this diagram, really take in what it's saying and what it's representing. Okay, now that you've had some time to think about the diagram and to turn it over, you should be pretty familiar with it. Now we get to the questions. Two questions to start off. How does this diagram help you understand God being three but one? And what's confusing about this diagram? I know it's not exactly clear. And so again, if you're with someone, you can discuss this. Uh, if you have a pen and paper, you can write your thoughts down. Or you, if you don't have either, you can just think through these things. Uh, but how does this diagram on the, the last slide, you can rewind if you need to, how does it help you understand God being three, but also one? And what's also confusing about that diagram? So take a moment, pause here. And now one final question to ask you. Out of all of the examples that we just looked at, which one, in your opinion, best helps you understand how God can be three, but one at the same time? Was the braid useful for you? Was the paint colors useful for you? Was the list of words and roles useful for you? Or was the diagram most useful for you? And so out of all the examples, pick one that you thought best helped you. Uh, so take a moment, pause here and think about that. Like I said, none of our examples are perfect, but looking at them all together, like not just looking at one, but looking at all of them, uh, each how they work together, where some fall short and where some excel, uh, but looking at all of them together can actually help us get a little bit closer to understanding the Trinity. But ultimately, God is all-powerful and he is beyond our understanding. We can keep looking for examples that can help us uh, understand the Trinity better. And that's a great way to know God more by looking for examples and trying to understand and know him more. Uh, and some people, you know, they think of, they think of steam, ice, and water as a way to, to describe the Trinity. Or they think of pretzels or, or apples. Uh, but you'll never really find the perfect example because... God is the only perfect thing and everything else is just his creation. And so it's really hard to find an example that accurately uh, illustrates the heavenly reality uh, using physical earthly means. Uh, and so you won't find anything perfect as a perfect one for one example because God being three in one is simply not like anything else we know or understand. And how cool is that, that we actually worship such a powerful God who isn't like anything else. He's not like anything of this world. He is. He has this, this one but three nature about him that's just incredibly interesting and awe-inspiring, if you ask me. But that leads me to my big idea for today. Again, if you're new here at Arc Preteens, every Sunday we have the big idea, which is the one sentence or one point kind of summary of the lesson, kind of the answer to the question of the day. And so our big idea for today is God is one in being and three in person. We call him the Trinity or the Trinitarian God, if you want a bit of a longer, more complicated word. Uh, but we understand God as being the Trinity. Uh, the Trinity is God and God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One in being and three in distinct persons. Very hard to kind of uh, grasp and, and conceptualize. But I, I realize that, that this big idea and this topic may have brought up even more questions in your mind about God. So let me provide you some facts about the persons of the Trinity. And so facts about the Trinity. They all work together in cooperation. They all point to each other. They're all equal and eternal. No, no one person of the Trinity created the others. They're all equal and they're all eternal. The Old Testament period was mostly about the Israelites' relationship with God the Father. The Gospels are when Jesus came to earth. And after Jesus went back to heaven is when the Holy Spirit came. But Jesus and the Holy Spirit are both all over the Old Testament. God the Father and the Holy Spirit are mentioned often by Jesus. And the rest of the New Testament, and even our life today, points to God the Father and Jesus. 
And so those are a couple quick points to rapid fire off. Pause if you want to read them again or take a screenshot if you if you want to save these so you can remember them. But uh, even though, sorry, <laughs> even though it would be nice if we could clearly understand the Trinity, I'm so glad that God is all powerful and beyond what we can totally understand. I wouldn't want to serve a God who I could perfectly understand and, and put in this nice little box and because then he wouldn't be an all-powerful God. He would just be as powerful as I was able to understand him. And I'm also glad that even though he's so big and powerful, he also invites us to talk to him through prayer anytime, anywhere. So let's do that right now, preteens. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another Sunday lesson that we could come together uh, virtually on YouTube, Lord, and to read your word and to learn more about you. God, I know that the Trinity subject is so complicated and so vast and maybe confusing for some of the preteen students. And Lord, I admit that sometimes even I don't fully feel like I understand or get it. But I know that your Holy Spirit helps to lead me in understanding and into truth. And so you will help me to live in faith and you will help the preteens to live in faith and to understand these complex things. And I pray that as the preteens read your word, as they read their Bibles, that you would continue to help them understand that your Holy Spirit would give them the eyes of understanding and wisdom to understand what they're reading, even if it may be complicated or seem complicated at first, Lord, so that they may glorify you and praise you accurately and appropriately as you have outlined and revealed yourself in Scripture. And so we thank you for your word, for it is eternal and timeless, Lord. We thank you that you have preserved it through the ages for us to read. And in everything, we ask that you would bless our Sunday lunches, that you bless the hands that are preparing them, that you would bless our conversations that we have as we eat, whether with friends, family, or strangers. And that in everything, we would glorify you as God, we would trust you as our creator, and we would trust Jesus as our savior and the Holy Spirit as our strength, and that we would look to you for all manner of wisdom and understanding. So we thank you, we love you, and we pray and ask these things. Everybody said together, amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our other Sunday lessons or any of the other videos we make. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. So glad you guys were here uh, and that you're learning stuff about the Bible. Uh, and if you have questions, again, my email is also down in the description. Feel free to send me an email with some extra questions and I'll try to help you out as best I can. Again, links to all of our playlists are down in the description. So make sure you go check those out so you can watch some of our other videos, uh, anything that you may have missed. Uh, and our one announcement for today, just a reminder, 7 p.m. every single Friday until we say, no, until we say we're not going to meet on a Friday, but every single Friday, unless you hear otherwise, uh, at 7 p.m., we meet at the warehouse for Vancouver students and the Poco campus for Port Coquitlam students. Vancouver students, just a reminder that you do need to reserve your spot at the website that is on the screen in front of you, archetypeyouth.com slash RSVP. I will put the link down in the description as well, but you need to go reserve your spot for Vancouver students. If you're a Poco student, don't worry about reserving your spot. You can just go to the Poco campus, 7 p.m. on a Friday. It's all good. But if you're coming to Vancouver, you do have to RSVP to reserve your spot just so we can know who's coming so we can plan appropriately and make sure we're being safe and careful. And it's super exciting that we can be back together again, that we could be uh, having fun and reading the Bible together and learning more about the Word and about God and about the Trinity and about everything uh, about Christianity. And so I'm so thankful that we have opportunities uh, like this and that we're allowed to do this, uh, that God has given us a space where we can do this, you know, a roof over our heads so we're not in the rain. Uh, and I just am so grateful and so thankful for this opportunity. So I hope you guys will be there. And remember that I'm praying for you as you go throughout your weeks as you're in school. And I'm praying for you and your families as you guys continue to spend time together uh, and maybe more time together than ever before. And I hope to see you guys there this Friday. And until then, God bless you guys. <laughs>